trying to get Britain back on its feet. Well, we're now joined by Dr Ellie Cannon, who said young people have sacrificed enough during the crisis and the older generation should return the favour. Dr Sonia Adesara, who says it's a ludicrous idea, believes it wouldn't work and is inhumane. And, of course, Dr Sarah Jarvis is here with us in the studio as well. Good to speak to all of you this morning. So, Dr Ellie, why is it time for young people uh, to get the chance to go back to pre-pandemic ways, if you like, and for the older generation, the over 40s, to take the hit? Well... We know very clearly that this virus discriminates against age. The number of people getting severely ill, the number of people dying under the age of 40 have shown us that very, very clearly. And we also know that the economy is inextricably linked to our health. So when deprivation goes up and when people don't have jobs and aren't able to learn to read properly or take on their apprenticeships, not only does their income go down, but their health also goes down. And we see that decade after decade from Marmot Reviews. We know that very, very clearly. So it's not economy or health. Economy is health. Now, for those of us who are higher risk, it makes sense to take the benefits of lockdown, to shield away, to do all of that in order to curb those risks. But for those people under 40 who are at low risk of suffering from COVID and low risk of bringing home COVID to their granny, they are also losing out from the benefits of their education, of their literacy, of things like apprenticeships, of earning money. And this is a generational catastrophe as far as I'm concerned. Dr Sonia makes sense, doesn't it? <sighs> So I do appreciate Dr Ellie um, considering my generation and, you know, taking one for the team. Um, but I think this idea and the narrative around this idea is, is flawed and deeply problematic. So if you just think about, you know, where does this idea take us? So if you start to think about the groups of people who are shown to be dying um, at increased rates from coronavirus, as Dr Ellie said, the virus does discriminate. Um, so it's Older people are dying at greater numbers, um, people with health problems, um, people living in ethnic minorities, people living in poverty, um, men are also dying at greater numbers. So if we're asking all those groups of people to um, stay at home, they can't go out to work, they can't contribute to the economy, they can't see their loved ones, while the rest of us, um, young, wealthy, slim, um, fit white people are allowed to go out, I think that will be quite a strange um, two-tiered society that I, I personally would feel quite uncomfortable in living in. Um, and I also think this, this idea doesn't work practically um, because it makes the assumption that young people and people in their 20s and their 30s don't come into contact with older people, um, which is just simply not the case. Many, many young people live with older people, live with their parents, live with their grandparents. Um, and even if they don't live with older relatives, you know, someone like myself, whether it's on, on the bus or, you know, on, on the shops, you know, or in my workplace, I am all, you know, every day I'll be coming into contact with people who are at risk. Um, and yes, my, um, it's very unlikely that if I was to get the virus, I would become seriously unwell, but that doesn't mean I don't stop transmitting the virus. Um, and we know that people, even if you're not having symptoms of the virus, you are still shredding the virus and you can still pass it on. Um, and we know again with young people, we know that they are not getting serious infections of the virus, but there is evidence to show that they are transmitting it. Teenagers, for example, transmit the virus. It's thought to be at similar rates to adults. So I think this, this idea is, is flawed. It's based on, you know, it's, it is quite irresponsible because it could cost lives. And I think the consequences for our society would be quite harmful in the long run. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ellie, quite irresponsible. And certainly on that point when, you know, I think Dr. Sonny makes it very clear there that actually lots of people under their 40 will be in, will be in um, contact with people who, uh, who, are, who are elderly and older, whether that's at home in multi-generational families or on public transport. Yeah, that's absolutely right. But there's very clear evidence from studies in Holland who have looked at this very closely with their public health systems and the Utrecht family studies that show that peers transmit the virus to peers. And you are not then talking about 
young people then being all over their granny or being more care be not being as careful as they were before. So we have to be careful about how we use headlines and then how we read the data behind it. There is not very good evidence for even teenagers transmitting the well, virus. Sorry, Dr. Ellie, wasn't, older... wasn't that slight the problem in Blackburn, though? I was just getting clarity. Mm -hmm. When we heard about the issues in Blackburn in Greater Manchester and the problem mm -hmm. with multi-generational families, wasn't the issue there that they, the danger was that people were coming from the outside, perhaps younger people who are out more, and going, going to wider family members or going to grandparents and spreading the virus? Isn't that, wasn't that a slight issue there? There is an issue, but you are talking about families who have got older people who are being more careful. So we are still practising face coverings, hand washing, social distancing. And we can talk about this as an idea that sounds discriminatory, or we can talk about it from the data. For example, in my practice where I work as a GP, this is already happening. We have already risk assessed all our staff. So me, as somebody with no background health conditions, although I am over 40, I am still seeing patients face to face. My but colleague, your who is idea, older than you me, wouldn't be though, <laughs> would you? Because it wouldn't be based on the fact that you're over 40, but you have no health conditions. It would be based on age, and I think that's where people get rankled. For instance, you know, what do you think about Dr. Sonia's um, idea of the message it sends out? You know. Your vision of the future, where we allow youngsters to take the strain, to drive the economy, it's not just youngsters, is it? As she says, it would be slim people, white people, people not from poor backgrounds, if you're looking at the data. What kind of message is that for a future society? Is it one we want? Well, look at what's going to happen with our future society with ongoing lockdown. We have children who are not being educated, children from deprived homes who have missed out of six months of literacy, not kids who are sitting at home with a nice iPad and parents who can teach them, people who have not had Wi-Fi or anything in order to help them get educated. And the inequality gap for those kids is rising and rising and affects their future prospects. And that leads to illness and deaths as well. We can't count them yet, but that will lead to that. We've lost 22,000 jobs in lockdown in the restaurant industry. Those are jobs that young people, people at the lower end of the wage spectrum would have. They now no longer have that income. This is and continues to be a generational catastrophe and we can't count deaths every day from young people because at this stage we can't see the impact. But as we go forward and we have lost the education, the prospects, the future, the health care for this young generation, okay. we will see the detrimental effect that Do it has had. Dr Sarah Giles, yeah, I know you yeah. want to come in here. <clears throat> yes, if I may. Um, I absolutely agree with Ellie about education. We've already seen that we know children are much, much lower risk, whether they're very young children or teenagers. The new evidence that's come out suggesting teenagers may be more likely to transmit has to be balanced against the risks for them. But this isn't just about generation. This virus doesn't just discriminate against generations, it discriminates against deprivation. And if we say we're going to lock people down because they're at higher risk as soon as they get to over 40, that's going to discriminate against people of South Asian origin, people who have diabetes, people who live in more overcrowded housing, all sorts of people who are already struggling more. And there's also the fact that an awful lot of older people would say, hold on a minute, we have worked all our lives to make this country what it is. Now you're saying you're going to let everybody under 40 get out there and do their own thing. And basically the cost for that is that we're going to have to be locked away completely. Because if under 40s are out there spreading the virus, as Dr Sonia so rightly says, then older people are going to have to hide away in their homes. But what's for Sarah, what, I think what she's arguing is that actually, in a way, maybe that's a, a pill we have to swallow. Because long term, if youngsters don't go forward, drive the economy, get their education, have their lives, then the deprivation 
from their futures will lead to more costs. Yeah, and I absolutely understand that, which is why I think getting back to school is so important. Yes. But we have to have the right steps in place. And there are other ways of doing it than saying, right, let's forget it if you're young. I'm not sure what, whether she's suggesting that nobody who is under 40 should worry about test and trace. Should anybody who's under 40 get themselves tested if they have symptoms, self-isolate? Because if that's the case, then we're going, to re we're going to end up in a situation where it's simply not safe for anybody who's vulnerable to go out. And, you know, one third of the people who are shielding clinically extremely vulnerable are of working age. It's not just older people.